Over the years, many wrestlers have staked a claim to being the greatest of all time. San Martino, Flair, Hart, Michaels, Undertaker, Mizawa, Kabashi, Austin, Guerrero, and so on. But one name towers above all others as the finest to ever set foot in the squared circle, inspiring millions around the world and striking fear into the hearts of his opponents. So buckle up and get ready to learn about the best ever in the world, ever in the world. Ever. I'm Jack from Cutaholic.com. Now roll that title sequence. Mantar's exact origin story is a source of debate, given, of course, that he is an ageless construct of Greek mythology. But it's generally accepted that he came through the burgeoning indie scene on the island of Crete. There, he quickly became the top heel of various promotions, including New Greece Pro Wrestling, Total Agamemnon Nonstop Action, and the World Wrestling Mediterranean. His true home, however, was always Labyrinth Underground, where he enjoyed a winning streak for several, several decades. His gimmick there was that of an unstoppable bodyguard for King Minos, an angle that WWE would steal many years later for Ted DiBiase and Andre the Giant. Eventually, though, it was time to leave his home promotion, and Mantar went out like any pro wrestler worth his salt by passing the torch and putting over a new star in his very last match. The bout between Mantar and Theseus of Athens has quite literally gone down in legend, with the beast laying down for the younger babyface. Of course, there was a political reason behind this shocking loss. Both WWF and WCW had their eyes on the mythological internet darling, and after a bidding war that stretched on for several thousand years, Mantar finally arrived in New York in the mid-1990s. Mantar was given a push to begin with, defeating Walter Slow in his Raw debut. Don't worry, we'll be doing the captivating career of Walter Slow in the very next episode. He also acquired the services of Jim Cornette as a manager, and even came close to winning the IC title from Razor Ramon, but lost by DQ after interference from Jeff Jarrett. However, even the biggest fans of Mantar couldn't help but notice that something had changed. His in-ring style was now limited to a series of basic shoulder tackles, slams, and splashes, and it just didn't look very good. Yes, by encouraging Mantar to adapt his style for a TV audience, WWF had forced him to abandon the thing that had made him a star in the first place, his signature Grecian strong style. Nevertheless, Mantar did wrestle his sole pay-per-view match as an entrant in the 1995 Royal Rumble. There, he lasted about 10 minutes or so before being sadly eliminated by Lex Luger. And it was all downhill there for the former ace of Labyrinth Underground. He lost his final televised match to Bam Bam Bigelow before making his final pay-per-view appearance as a lumberjack at In Your House 2. Quite the fall from grace. However, this story does have a happy ending. Thankfully, the final chapters of Mantar's career were much more impressive. He returned to the independent scene and became a Ring of Honor legend, thanks mainly to the groundbreaking Summer of Mantar storyline. From there, he added countless classic performances to his resume in prestigious promotions the world over, such as CMLL, Dragon Gate, and Five Star Wrestling. He even took part in the game-changing final deletion match in Impact, showing that he still had that famous Mantar sense of humor. His Wrestle Kingdom 11 match against Kazuchika Okada even broke Dave Meltzer's star rating system, and his performance in last year's Battle of LA tournament delighted indie fans around the world. Ever the professional, Mantar didn't even insist on beating anybody at the tournament, losing in the first round to Joey Janela. Although he's never officially retired, Mantar's last recorded match was quite a few months ago, his triumphant return to the Crete Independency. There, he defeated a now heel Theseus in a barbaric rematch. Many online reviews of the event mentioned the attention that was paid to long-term storytelling, with the referee confiscating Theseus' signature ball of thread, a key element of their original match back in the day. These days, however, Mantar has nothing left 
to prove. He's traveled the world, wrestled in some of the best matches of all time, and captured the imagination of millions. And of course, none of us could forget that excellent series of matches he had as well with Jack Swagger, a truly groundbreaking series of bouts. Mantar's whereabouts are uncertain these days, but PW Insider recently reported that he set up a training school on Mount Olympus, teaching the new breed of titans and demigods how to bump and how to sell with the best of them. So with that, we salute you, Mantar, a hero of the wrestling business and unquestionably the greatest of all time. Thanks very much for watching and let us know what you think in the comments section down below. You can follow Cultaholic on Twitter at Cultaholic and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do, then please do check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic, where you can pledge. And don't forget, of course, most importantly of all, to hit subscribe and to join us.